Hey guys, uh, today I am going to give you some extremely valuable general information on super high efficient buildings, including super insulated passive solar deep winter greenhouse like mine, passive solar building. I'm going to do some sketches for you. I have had a ridiculous amount of inquiries, emails, messages from people doing other projects, even sending me their plans. I am extremely busy, business, building, actually preparing, actually building things with my own two hands. I am, I am just swamped. So bear with me, I'm going to hammer this out. Now, I would consider myself to be one of the foremost experts on super efficient passive solar technology. I live in an extreme harsh climate in the center of Canada where it gets to minus 50 Celsius, but we have the sun available. I can build buildings that will not freeze with no additional heat in our conditions. Anywhere else you live that's not where I am, you've got a better chance of even doing it. So now I've stood on the shoulders of giants um, with some of the information I learned. I've done it hands-on. I have physically built them. I've also made mistakes. There would be some changes that I would have made um, on some of my buildings to optimize things that I've done. And I'm going to try to share that to you by sketching it out. So stay tuned and let me know how much value that you have in this. Um, maybe in another life or maybe as I uh, learn to delegate business and and things, maybe I will be able to do some consulting uh, because the amount of inquiries is ridiculous. And um, I know what I'm going to share with you today is really, really beneficial stuff that's going to help you tremendously if you're thinking about building any sort of high efficient building. Okay, stay tuned. Bear with me. Let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, so this is pretty uh, primitive here, how I've got this set up, but I'm going to walk you through a bunch of different things. So just me, a pen, and paper. This is all I got time for, but you're going to find extreme value in it. My greenhouse is... 32 feet deep back to the front pole comes out at a 45 degree angle that's 11 feet bus window pony wall super insulated so this is 45 degree angle and then a low slope back here so with my latitude the it's 14 degrees and uh, the winter solstice and 60 degrees is the summer solstice so this is 14.5 feet high to the inside this is about uh, what is it 11 feet or something like that so the the winter solstice is a slightly less angle so it never touches the the roof of the building the ceiling of the building and in the summertime is about 60 degrees now 45 degree angle the snow doesn't accumulate and it's allowed to zip off uh, with polycarbonate the angle it's not like glass it doesn't uh, matter as much to be perpendicular to the winter solstice um, so this is 60 degrees is my summer solstice and this one is 14 degrees and this goes back 32 feet but overall it is 43 feet from the very back of the greenhouse to the very front so at the back of the greenhouse i have all my 45 gallon drums this is painted black the concrete and my inside grow bed or i guess it's about there inside grow bed gets about a little over half of the sun um, all year round this is the shade line for the summer solstice and then the Sun moves back here uh, at the end of August it's it's going to be pretty well touching the 
the whole raised bed there and in the winter time it hammers the the coldest part of the year all that thermal mass back there but so i used vaulted uh trusses that i just happened to get and my shop i'm just going to overlay it here comes up like this is the eve of my shop so i couldn't really go higher unless i was going to dig into here but 16 feet and for the size it this just worked great for my situation okay so that's my greenhouse that i did now if you were considering doing a deep winter greenhouse here's what some people do some of the so-called experts with uh, um, passive solar greenhouses and things they'll do a back wall that's insulated then they'll have a low slope roof or something like that and then a pony wall maybe they'll have some ventilation here maybe they'll even put some ventilation here the snow falls and it sits on the structure so it has snow load issues to deal with with the structure um, and also the shading from the snow so they're going to be up there if they're going to try to use this in the winter they're going to be up here shoveling snow off all the time there's no point to that and people there's experts that build these type of things that are um, at my latitude and it makes no sense okay so in the summertime the sun is blasting the entire greenhouse so they're going to have overheating problems need ventilation and in the winter time that light might be bouncing off but you know there's there's no sense and heat rises and this is just poly or polycarbonate so all your heat loss is going to go out so my design is you have an insulated part just really briefly back wall roof and heat rises and this is where the sun comes in so in the winter time sun comes in like that summertime comes in like this okay now if i was going to build another one just a freestanding one get yourself a garage package now figure out the size and you're going to have to figure out your angles but let's say a 24 by 24 garage package or 24 by whatever garage package you're going to get 24 foot trusses okay so 24 feet but let's say this is south uh, instead of building a wall here you do post and a beam and leave it open and then you do a 45 degree angle south side like my greenhouse and you have a deep winter greenhouse now if you're you have to get the ceiling height right right so if you just do eight foot and this is 24 foot the winter sun's going to be like won't even touch the back wall type of thing and in the summer it'll only get to here so you have to figure out your angles so if if you were to like mine 16 feet high my greenhouse on the south 16 feet and it worked out 32 feet back 32 is what it worked out to so if you just cut that in half eight feet 16 foot so you get a 16 foot garage okay so si only 16 foot trusses if you're going to do an eight foot wall so this is 16 feet this is eight feet and then you do the south like i did mine so 45 degree angle and that would only come out da, 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 five feet five and a half feet 5.5 feet um, you could do a greenhouse like this so instead of a vault or you can do vaulted trusses you're just going to have some extra dead air space and it might be fine but the reason I do this is you can use standard trusses okay so standard trusses any hardware store has it and you can blow in insulation in because with my greenhouse on a vault it was a great deal of work to for me to insulate that from the bottom and I got R60 in there because mine were uh, 18 inch high uh, 
beams that I used. But if if I had just done um, trusses, standard trusses, I'd have a little extra dead airspace on the north, which might have been fine. If I wasn't connecting it to my shop, and um, then I could have just blown in R80 insulation, which is about 28 inches of insulation. R40, I believe, is 14 inches of blow-in insulation, depending on the brand. So that would be very, very simple. Now, this is okay. a top view. Let's say you're, you're going to start a homestead and you have plans to build a large shop. I've had lots of inquiries like this. So 60-foot wooden trusses is about the biggest that they can manufacture. So let's say this massive building, 60 feet wide by, doesn't matter, however big you're planning on going. This is a top view with standard trusses. So your pole building, you have posts, right? And uh, every eight feet or whatever, and then purlins. And then on the south side, this is south, where the sun is, where I'm at, you put posts every 16 feet and you close in this, this, and this. So close it all in and super insulate it. But instead of doing the whole building, you just, uh, the, the roof comes over here, you leave this open, or I guess you insulate the whole thing. And then on your south side is where your polycarbonate comes. So if this is a 60 foot building with 16 foot tall uh, posts that's the ceiling height in it instead of having this the shop you do it all in one build you do a 60 foot uh, wide trusses and half in the building is greenhouse so you do an insulated wall here this is your greenhouse this is your shop so your shops 30 by whatever and your greenhouse is 30 this so this is like my greenhouse but here so a side view is, okay, 16 foot high, so 60 foot like this, and then you build a wall in between. Um, let's say this is south now. Greenhouse like that. Your, this is your greenhouse. This is your shop. And standard shop trusses or whatever like that. So if this is just like any sort of building anybody can build it except on the south end you just leave these posts open and do a greenhouse front on the south side okay now if I was to build it again all in one building all the way from scratch this is what I do I would build a 60 foot, because that's how big a truss as you can get, and it just works out this way, 60 foot building. Okay, instead of standard trusses, I would get custom made trusses that have a 45 degree angle on the south side, and then a lower slope back to the north. With these trusses, I would. This is where I would put my solar panels, both for thermal water and solar electric PV panels. Okay, that's an angle that's kind of optimum for uh, both the summer and the winter, and no snow load type of thing. So on my trusses, my greenhouse would be on the south. This would come out 11 feet. So this is essentially my greenhouse. Okay, but if I was doing it all in one building, this is what I'd do. I'd get 60-foot trusses, great big ones, or build a steel building. But see if you can get trusses built, engineered like this. However, uh, you know, the trusses would be. Blow in R80 insulation like this. Plenty of room for solar panels. You have a great big eaves trough for rainwater collection off the whole tin roof of this whole building. 
your shop would be 30 feet wide, your greenhouse would be 30 feet into the building, and the structure on the front of the building, every 16 feet on center, like my, I did mine, the posts would just be open, and then you do the south like this. So how this is going to work in the winter time, just like my building, the sun is going to come in about like this, and in the summertime, it's going to come in like this. So winter, or uh, sorry, summer, winter would be uh, uh, 14 degrees, summer 60 degree angle. So, and then I would do concrete, I would do thermal mass tanks, black concrete, and then your in-floor grow bed, sidewalk, and a raised bed up front, just like I did mine. Okay, but, but this is actually in the main building. You could also put, instead of solid thermal mass, the odd window into your shop. So in the wintertime, you'll actually get sun in the shop as well. So your shop in the summertime would be nice and cool to work. And in the wintertime, it would just be a little bit cooler. But this thermal mass wall would just, you know, it, it's just a really good building like that. Passive solar house, when I build, so my house is, looks like this. And I got standard trusses, but a four foot overhang. So on my house, it's nine foot walls, a four foot overhang, eave overhang. This is a, a side view of my house. This is south. My windows, there's a structural beam there. My windows there and it's three feet off the ground. So this is the glazing. So in the winter time, I get full sun. In the summertime, is like this, I get no sun. And this is your standard passive solar house. And this is how it works for my uh, latitude and, uh, and where the sun location is for me and this works great so it's a certain like this is way different than a uh, greenhouse construction this would be um, passive solar house so you don't want any summer sun to heat up your building and winter sun like this where I wish I would have done on my little house differently is getting those trusses built with a 45 degree angle it would be about like that. So four foot overhang. Exactly how I did it because my, my angles I calculated works. There's the window. Four foot overhang, nine foot walls. And I could have put solar panels in the optimum condition at a 45 degree angle. Instead, my house, it's if I put solar panels, they're going to get covered in snow. So I screwed up there. I'd get uh, specially designed trusses for that. And then when you put an eave here, you don't bother collecting any rainwater. You could put a little eave there, or uh, eaves trough there. But you can collect all that rainwater to, you know, the side of your house to a tank or whatever. When I build my big house someday, this is exactly how I'm going to do it. I'm going to have 10 or 12 foot ceilings. It's just a big open bungalow type of thing. And just like the design I did before, it probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 60 foot building. This is garage on the north. You drive your vehicles in here and this is south. But instead of a greenhouse like this, I'm just going to have just a quick calculation, nine foot, four foot. It would be, let's say I did 12 foot ceilings or, or 10 or yeah, 12 foot ceilings type of thing. I'd probably have about a six foot overhang. I just have to do that calculation. My trusses would come up like this for solar panels and a low slope to the back garage. 
and so this means in my house I'm gonna get there's no no greenhouse here right this is just the house you have your certain amount of glazing so it's protected from the summer sun and you get full winter sun like this so open concept uh, type of thing and I might even put like thermal mass water tanks just like my greenhouse paint the concrete black or the floor flooring black and yeah and with this big overhang that means you got plenty of room to put R80 blow-in insulation you leave a good overhang on the north as well so your garage you know you you insulate this wall really good and this wall so you could steal heat from the house for the garage or the garage would just be cooler this house would be extremely cool year-round and um, it would be uh, extremely warm in the winter so this part of it would not freeze in the winter time with no heat it would probably be a comfortable temperature if you insulate it properly and just this design so you like you wouldn't need a furnace for this house and I just have an open uh, just a fireplace somewhere right take it out the roof for those cold days and this would like this is the best preparedness off-grid net zero structure you could possibly build okay okay now if I was to do an all-in-one so you want your greenhouse your shop and garage and house all in one this is exactly what I would do it. So this would mean you need a lot of capital. You need a lot of help to build it. So when I did my stuff, I built the shop. That took me two years to build the shop. Took me nine months full time or double time to build my own house with my own two hands. And two years so far part time on the greenhouse. So, but if you have some some capital to deploy and you're thinking of actually doing this you could do it you could size it down or up but i'm just going to give you a general kind of idea of what i would do so this is south and this is a top view so let's just for the sake of doing it 60 feet by whatever let's just six by a hundred okay 60 by 100 those trusses like I told you to build uh, build so this is a 45 degree angle for solar panels okay and this is a low slope for rain water so the rain goes here to massive gutter like this and so this is what your trusses look like but split the building roughly in between give or take so you would have an insulated wall, this, and your greenhouse would be here. Let's just do it like this. Greenhouse, and this 30 feet is shop on the north side. So the shop would be cooler. You don't necessarily have to heat it all the time. Uh, I would do this, a super insulated wall, and then all your thermal mass storage your concrete and then I would do the south like my polycarbonate like I did my south side coming off so there's posts and beams here for the main structure whatever it is 16 feet on center if you're using dimensional lumber <clears throat> and this is my greenhouse but I would uh, do the trusses like that so I could have solar panels, blow in insulation, and a low slope and collect the rainwater off, off of there. Then if I was going to integrate a house into the same build, I would just continue, get the same size trusses, but with a different load point. So let's say your house, if this is 100 feet, let's just for the sake of it say this is 50 feet, whatever, that's a huge house. 3,000 square feet. Uh, this would be also a 16 foot high um, uh, ceiling height. Okay, so 
with 16 foot or even 18 foot, you could have a partial mezzanine in the back of the shop or something like a, a two floor or with your house, 18 feet would give you a good two story high house. But I would do the trusses the same, the exact same. So you can continue those solar panels and rainwater except for what the house is different than a greenhouse i would make sure the load point of the truss is whatever it is six feet back and this would be the front of my house back into it um, so you'd you'd be protected no summer sun coming in your house uh, but all the winter sun coming in the greenhouse you'd get summer sun coming in because you're growing stuff in there and it would your whole roof would kind of match up and this would be a two-story house and again that that would be a huge house that's 3,000 square feet of level 60 by f by 50 um, you probably don't want that big but I'm just showing you exactly uh, what I do so again once again the cross section this is the north wall 16 foot high or 18 or something So with a passive solar house, you're, you have the eave, angle comes up, and like this. And this could be um, house, garage. 30 feet is perfect for, for a garage. You can get any truck in there and have a shelf at the end or whatever. And house, you can make work. Um, if you're doing a two-story house so there's your floor then it would be less of an overhang because maybe to here you're only trying to protect the sun um, to this one and on your first story you do a pergola to protect the sun from hitting these windows so there's a set of windows there's a set of windows and then so this this protects the the main floor windows this eve protects the second floor windows in the winter time the sun is going to come in both of those windows now i'm not planning on doing a two-story i just don't like them so i'm just going to have um, no second floor so 10 feet high the window would be here. The glazing, so 10 feet high, would be about a five foot overhang. I have to like give or take. The truss coming back. Super well insulated wall halfway back, 30 feet. About a 30 foot garage at the back. And that's what my house is going to look like. So solar panels at the optimum angle, rainwater collection, uh, at least 28 inches of blow-in insulation for an R80. You get more insulation uh, over this coldest spot. This sun would come back, like hit my entire back wall if I had an open concept design. And I wouldn't do a greenhouse in but if I was doing it all in one build, I would connect this structure to to this structure. Okay, so this little house you can put next to it with the same roof, the same slope or whatever, and connect it to it. And then you could walk from your house... This is your house. You can have a patio door that goes into your greenhouse. You can, uh, if this back half is garage with overhead doors on the north or something, your sh large shop, overhead doors. This is only 30 foot, so I'd put an overhead door in so you could get a big trailer or something in this part of the shop. So the north half would be garage, which would just be cooler both in the summer and the winter you wouldn't even have to heat it you're going to super insulate the wall in between 
and that's if I was doing an all-in-one build this is exactly what I would build so I would integrate the greenhouse into the main structure I wouldn't do it like just on the south type of thing so obviously you're you run your trusses east or the buildings east to west and trusses this way another thing uh, when I did my shop I put the trusses the other way and it was essentially I just bought a cheap agriculture building package and I hammered it up I had no intentions of insulating it it was just going to be a storage building but things didn't work out took over two years to sell our house in the city and um, and it sold for a lot less so it took so long I didn't have the resources or capital to to build kind of this so I ended up finishing off my shop and it's just I made it work right you just make things work if you were buying a property and you had you know let's say that there's a shop but there's just a shop from there's whatever ag shop or an old chicken barn or something but this is south don't buy that property if it's built like this if you have a shop or Quonset and this is south awesome maybe consider buying that property you could eliminate this wall take it out and just leave the po posts or whatever or the structure do a greenhouse on it and you could alter this old farm building or whatever you're buying to have kind of work with uh, as long as the eave is facing the right way so you could have greenhouse here and carry it into the shop you know, this would be a, another wall you build, split the shop so you have greenhouse in part of it, and shop in the back. So, I kind of hope that that helps, but um, this is what I would do all in one building. So you get the 60 foot trusses, 45 degree angle for solar panels. If it's a house, the proper overhang. If it's a greenhouse, then you have no overhang. And the greenhouse there because you want summer sun in your greenhouse and let me know what you thought of that uh, just my doodling and sketches that's literally all I have time for uh, right now I hope it's helpful let me know if it was if you have any questions in the comments I'll try to get to them and uh, maybe I will do a super detailed blueprint of what I would build if I was to do it over the um, and the actual greenhouse that I did build, which is correct, but I would have integrated my shop into it differently. And I actually, instead of having a house uh, in front, I would have had it on the side of the greenhouse, um, just like I drew for you. Somewhere, where are you? It's a lot of doodles. Right, so this is my greenhouse is here. Well, actually, let me draw you one more picture. Not saving very many trees today. This is how I have mine. My shop, and I, I just have it running this way. My greenhouse is here. This is to actual scale. My shop 60 by 60, or actually 56 by 64. The greenhouse is 64 feet, and then it comes in there. This is the polycarb. This is the door to get into it. This is the overhead door to my shop, two of them. Um, so this is my greenhouse. This is the growing area and the path. The raised bed is here. This is black concrete. This is my thermal mass. This is my rainwater collection tanks. And this is my lean-tos into the shop. I have an overhead here for ventilation, an overhead here to shut it down from the greenhouse. And what I could act 
could actually do is build a house here so it would be set back a tiny bit or maybe just no I'd set it back a little bit just do my a little house here and then I could have uh, just like you go uh, patio doors to go or garden doors to go outside of your house you could go into the greenhouse like this and the greenhouse ties the two buildings together so when it's minus 50 outside or it snows four feet or some some stuff I literally don't have to leave this structure um, so putting it all in one would work if you did a did or have a shop already maybe you consider connecting it to just like I did like I just kind of made it work as I went to the best of my knowledge at the time now like I, I did if I could do it all in one build, I would do, you know, these previous drawings I, I showed you. But, and this this is kind of a modular uh, thing as well. So I'm actually going to eliminate this overhead door, or leave it in, but put a wall of windows. So I'm going to get literal winter sun in the, the shop as well, and black concrete. So the shop's passive solar. It also has some big windows. So it and it's super insulated. This is super insulated, but gets summer sun all the time. And your house, you want to protect, so overhang, so it doesn't get any summer sun and it gets all the winter sun. But the greenhouse is different than a passive solar house. Okay, let's leave it at that. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. So Kevin, John, Peter. Adam and Frank, uh, <laughs> who emailed me super lately. I hope that helps and anybody else um, uh, getting ready to build or has building questions. I hope that that, I sincerely hope that that helped. All I got time for, uh, like, subscribe, comment. I'll try to answer your comments. Um, and maybe I'll do a super fine tune consulting general super high value thing uh, later as well. So take care. We'll see you next time.